Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this episode of Answering Objections to Christianity. Who wrote the book of Second Peter in the Bible? Well, most non-evangelical scholars will tell you that it was not the Apostle Peter. However, most evangelical scholars will tell you that it was the Apostle Peter. Now, if you're a Christian and you don't want to be cut off guard by an unbeliever who tells you the Bible contains forgeries, then stay tuned. Second Peter is the book that the skeptics find most vulnerable to criticism. I will give you a quick overview of the case made by the critics, and then we will go into more detail. Here is the overview. They will say that Second Peter was not written by the Apostle Peter because there are differences between First Peter and Second Peter, and information in Second Peter points to a much later date. Also, Second Peter is connected to Jude, and Jude is written at a much later date. Finally, as Jude would be a contemporary of the Apostle Peter, they will challenge the authorship of the book of Jude. Now, their main argument is this. 1. There are significant differences between 1 Peter and 2 Peter. 2. There are reasons to date the text much later than the time of Peter. Therefore, Peter probably did not write 2 Peter. Now, the simple response to this is as follows. Yes, 1. There are significant differences between 1 and 2 Peter which is understandable given the subject, mood, and agent of the letters. And two, there is no good reason to date the text later than the time of the Apostle Peter. Therefore, there is no good reason to doubt that Peter is the author of Second Peter. Now that you have a basic overview, let's go into more details. The argument is based on two premises. That is, differences and date, the double Ds. Let's look at the first premise, the differences. Now they will say the differences between 1 Peter and 2 Peter include literary differences, stylistic differences, and theological differences. Now the response to this is, of course there's going to be differences when there's a variation in subject matter and mood between the two letters. And the amount of Peter's writings is small, too small to form a solid judgment about his style. Also, people's style can change, like Paul's style changed when he went to Athens. Now, these differences do not form a decisive argument against Petrine authorship. Finally, Peter may have used a secretary to write the letter. Now, at this point, the critic may say, Peter, a Galilean fisherman, could not be the author as he would have to be familiar with the Greek culture and philosophy. Now, the response to this is, yes, Hellenistic terms are used, such as knowledge, virtue, moral excellence, and eyewitness, etc., but none of these terms are of which could not have been picked up by a bilingual Galilean, and the use of these terms by the general public need not suppose an acquaintance with current philosophical discussions. Well, now that you've seen the first premise, the differences, and that it's not a good reason to conclude a different author, let's take a look at the second premise, the date. Now, there are six reasons given to imply a later date than the time of Peter. Let's go through them one by one. First, all of Paul's writings are referenced as authoritative, and this indicates a post-apostolic age, they'll say. Now, the response to this is, all of Paul's writings mentioned in Second Peter 3.16 means at least all the letters known by Peter, who obviously knew some of Paul's writings and considered them to be authoritative. Look at Galatians 2.9. Now, the second reason given by the critic is this. There are false teachers mentioned, and these false teachers are the second century Gnostics. The response to this is, false teachers, mentioned here and elsewhere in Scripture, simply means heretical teachers, and it's an unqualified assumption to conclude them as second century Gnostics, even if there are some parallels. Now, the third reason given by the critics is this. The text says, ever since our fathers died. This suggests a post-apostolic age. Here, the scoffers are asking, where is Jesus' return? Now, the response to this is, Ever since our fathers died at 2 Peter 3, 4, refers to the Jewish patriarchs. The context connects the fathers with the beginning of creation and the flood. If this was referring to the apostles, it would mean that Peter has died. But the text says it is Peter who is writing. All right, the fourth reason given by the critics is this. The text says your apostles. This seems to be a strange and cold label for an author who is an apostle. Also, the combination of prophets and apostles is similar to that of the 2nd century writers. 
Now the response to this is, your apostles is a reference to apostles that worked with the readers. Your apostles in contrast to false teachers that are not theirs. Now, as to the combination of prophets and apostles, this is found elsewhere in Scripture, Ephesians 2.20. The fifth reason given by the critics is this. Second Peter is not quoted by the second century church fathers. The response to this is, Second Peter is not quoted by the second century church fathers, which is understandable if Second Peter was sent to restricted areas, and by the time it was circulated it was suspicious, but ultimately became universally accepted on the recognition of the apostolic content and authorship. The sixth reason given by the critics is this. Jude was used as a source for Second Peter, but Jude was composed much later than the time of the Apostle Peter. Now the response to this is, some of Jude may have been used by, the, by Peter, as he thought the content applied well to his reader's situation. And as to the late date of Jude, there is no good reason to conclude a late date for Jude. Well, now that we have seen that the critics' arguments is not a good argument, as the first premise is irrelevant and the second premise is false, let us now look at the reasons they give for Jude being composed much later. Well, there are three reasons given by the critics to infer a late date for the book of Jude. Reason number one, Jude verse 3 is referring to a time when Christianity is well established so the author is not a first-generation Christian. The response to this is, Jude verse 3 does not necessitate a late-date interpretation. Christians had a common basis of belief from the first. Likewise, in regards to contend for the faith, this simply indicates a fixed body of doctrine. The second reason given for a late date is this. Jude verse 4 mentions false teachers. These false teachers are second-century Gnostics. The response to this is, Jude verse 4 simply condemns immoral teachers. There is not enough information in the text to identify them to any particular group, such as 2nd century Gnostics, Carpocratians, Ophites, etc. The third reason given for a late date of Jude is this. Jude verse 17 tells the readers to remember the apostles, which indicates that the time of the apostles has passed. The response to this is, Jude verse 17 does not necessitate a late date interpretation. Jude is simply referring to apostolic predictions, and he seems to have a specific prediction in mind, asking his readers to remember instructions received in conversation from a past apostolic visit, not a literary work. All right, now that we've looked at the specific reasons for a late date given by the critic, and we see that they are not good reasons, we will now look at the author of the book of Jude. The book of Jude says it was written by Jude the brother of James. This would make Jude a contemporary of Peter. Now if Jude and Second Peter are connected, the critics will give five reasons to doubt the authorship of Jude. One, there is a theory that Jude was a second century bishop of Jerusalem. The response to this is, there are no parallels to support this view. The second reason given to doubt the authorship is this. There's a theory that Jude was Jude the Apostle called Judas at Luke 6, 16 and Acts 1, 3. The response to this is, the author doesn't claim to be an apostle, but rather regards the apostles as apart from himself. The third reason given to doubt authorship is, a theory that Jude was an unknown Jude, son of an unknown James. The response to this is that theory is unsupported by the text and improbable since it gained circulation because of the well-known name of James. The fourth reason given is Jude was the grandfather of a man brought before Domitian, the Roman emperor. The response to this is that may be true. If Jude was in his 70s in A.D. 81, then his grandson could have been brought before Domitian. The fifth reason given to doubt authorship is this. There are references to Gnostics, an established faith, and a reference to the apostles in the past tense. The response to this is, these references need not necessitate a late date interpretation, as we have seen earlier. Well, ladies and gentlemen, 
Now that you have seen the five reasons given to doubt the authorship of Jude as being Jude the brother of James, and there are no good reasons, we can say this. The practice of a good historian is to start with what the text says. The text says it was written by Jude the brother of James. There are no good reasons to doubt the authorship as Jude the brother of James, therefore the author of Jude is Jude the brother of James. Here is something else to consider. Since Jude, the brother of James, lived during the first generation Christians, if Jude is connected with Second Peter, then the author of Second Peter was alive during the first generation Christians. All right, now that we have seen the arguments are not good given by the critics, here are some additional points to consider. 1. There are echoes of a man's vocabulary in Second Peter that can be connected to the Peter recorded in the book of Acts. Subtleties, words like received, godliness, day of the Lord, and punishment. It seems that if it was not Peter writing Second Peter, then the author would have used more obvious parallels, or none at all. Second, the book of Second Peter has an immeasurable superiority over the superior, spurious Petrine writings, such as the Gospel, Preaching, Acts, and Apocalypse of Peter. Spiritual quality is a matter of inspiration, not skill. Third, in Second Peter, Paul is addressed as our beloved brother. Unlike the second century church fathers speak of Paul in more exalted ways, such as the sanctified Paul and blessed and glorious Paul. Four, there are difficulties ascribing a satisfactory motive to prompt apostolic authority, unlike the spurious Petrine books that have a suitable motive. The practice of a good historian is to start with what the text says. Second Peter says that it was written by the Apostle Peter, and the text should be presumed innocent until proven guilty. Six, the people of God received Second Peter and accepted that it was written by the Apostle Peter. They discovered that it tells the truth of God and has the power of God. Ladies and gentlemen, here's the conclusion. Second Peter says that it was written by the Apostle Peter. There is no good reason to doubt that it was written by the Apostle Peter. Therefore, Second Peter was written by the Apostle Peter. Well, thank you so much for watching. Please post your questions, like, share, and subscribe. And have a great day.